Hey, everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm and uh, always powered by Mickey. Always. So I got something from Amazon Prime. This is a record that I had sold, uh, oh, I don't know, in the late 90s, I guess, uh, when I got the CD. Big mistake. Uh, some of you kids don't even know what I'm talking about, but back in the, <laughs> in the days when we got the CD, we would sometimes sell the vinyl record. Because why would we want that? So, uh, people, uh, Amazon does a great job, I think, in packaging. Uh, somebody gave me, Mr. Mayo, uh, the business about him going to Record Store Day and getting Bobby Gentry uh, because the corners were dinged. You know, it's like, you know, really? That's, you're, you're worried about that? But, you know, if you went and bought a car, you wouldn't want to scratch on it, you know, right? So it's really no different. Anyway, I sold this record for an insanely low price, a uh, big mistake again. I think I only paid five bucks for it originally, and I probably sold it for a buck or two. And now I've spent 15 bucks for this reissue, which I think is, is fine. And this is the last of the records that I sold off that I regret. I've reclaimed them all. There were only about 10 or 15 that I'm like, you know what? I should have never sold that thing wasn't, I don't think, an original press anyway. It was an island press, and it was for this record, Here Come the Warm Jets by Brian Eno. And look, if you look in the reflection, you can see me looking at you, looking at me, looking at you, looking at me, looking into infinity. Let's go ahead and do a sealed to revealed using a guitar pick, the best way to open up. And so uh, European corners uh, in Europe, in England, they, they cut the edges. 180 grams with custom labels. <laughs> and they do a close-up of one of the points I was going to bring up. Uh, Brian Eno was uh, a, a sexual deviant to a, a certain extent. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. But uh, no, he, he was, uh, it was the early 70s and he was active. Let's just say that. And on uh, the vinyl copy... You don't see this on the CD, but you can see it when you've got 12 inches of cover art that there is a pornographic car playing card right here of a woman urinating on the cover of the album, which is uh, also kind of a reference to the uh, title, Here Come the Warm Jets, also about peeing. Just bringing it up, by the way. This is one of the greatest debuts ever. Uh, terrible printing in the back. You can't really read it, but uh, you couldn't read the original either. Uh, you know, was always adamant that he was not really a musician. He was a non-musician. Uh, so much so that he played in the Portsmouth Sinfonia. I think that's how, I think that's the, I, I know the Sinfonia is right. I don't know, but, but Portsmouth? Yeah, I think that sounds right. They were a, a collective of musicians who did not know how to play their instruments. If you learned how to play your instrument, you were kicked out of the band. And they even play on my favorite Brian Eno album, uh, Taking Tiger Mountain by Strategy. And it just sounds off kilter when they play. It sounds like a, uh, like a horror show, to be honest with you. Uh, this is on uh, Island, uh, Palm Tree Island. Uh, this has a typewriter solo. Uh, what he does with music is just in insane. And so uh, Robert Fripp plays on this album. And uh, more people from Roxy Music. Oh, by the way, he was in Roxy Music uh, on the first album and maybe the second album. I can't remember. And he's just kind of credited as synthesizers. And, you know, he, he did sound manipulation. He ran things through his synthesizer. And there's plenty of synthesizers on this. But it's not like a uh, craft work -y synthesizer. It's, it's uh, jarring sounding. Non-musical sounding. So, uh, uh, who... Off this album, I can't remember Bauhaus covers off this album or this album. I think it's this album. Uh, Elf Power from the Animal Six, not Animal Six, uh, the Elephant Six uh, Collective, uh, I think covers uh, one of the songs on here. There's a song on here called uh, Driving Me Backwards that sounds like it's being played backwards. Just an insane, great album. Love this album. So happy to get it back. Uh, Eno's third album. Music where he sings album, you know, there's four in the 70s. Uh, 
So another Green World. I picked this up at a antique mall here. Uh, this was an album that I sold, but I got it back. Uh, I picked up an antique mall around here for five bucks. I think they just didn't know what it was. And this is on, uh, what, Blue Islands? Yeah, so it's a later pressing. That's fine. I was more amazed that I found it down here in North Carolina. This is not stuff that uh, was particularly well-known or popular in its time. Only a select few people even, you know, followed it. Like, if he sold, like, 100,000 albums, I think that was probably pretty big. Uh, I also have 801 Live. This is also one of my greatest pickups. My first girlfriend who lived in Epsica, New Jersey, a suburb of Atlantic City, well, there was a uh, a big barn there that sold antiques. And so she wanted to go there. I'm like, okay, fine. And this album, for some reason, was there for 50 cents in that barn. Well, it's cut out, though. Just barely on the front, but in the back, you can tell it was cut out. So uh, 801 is uh, Phil Manzanera, and Eno plays on here. Also, they do a good version of Tomorrow Never Knows. And they also cover Babies on Fire from Eno's first album. And Third Uncle is on uh, uh, Taking Tiger Mountain, right? Yeah. So, Taking Tiger... Uh, Third Uncle, I think, is the song that Bauhaus covered. Eno also had a... Uh, he, I guess he's credited as the inventor of ambient music. So he had an accident, and he was in the hospital, and someone had turned on classical music, but very, very low... And he was too injured to actually go and turn it up. So this kind of spurred him on to music that's background, but, you know, there, but not intrusive. Something that you're not actively listening to. And so part two of this legend is that he set up some uh, uh, sequences on a sequencer. And that, a sequencer, for by the way, in case you don't know, for a synthesizer, is you set up the notes and then it'll just run through that sequence. So, you know, da, 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 and then the sequence of da, 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 and uh, most famously, I guess, is uh, on uh, uh, Dark Side of the Moon. So that's just a sped up sequencer going through that. Anyway, uh, I, 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 I don't know if Eno really invented this, but he's certainly somebody who utilized this in an interesting way. Uh, is a, a type of delay which he actually demonstrates on discrete music here in the back. And what he did was he took a tape recorder, ran the tape, and instead of going on the take-up spool, he would actually run it to a second machine and run it up on that take-up spool. And then he would take the feed, the playback head on the second unit, and feed it to the first. So there was a delay right and the sound would loop back and forth but he did change the volume it wasn't perfect so it would it would get further and further and further away so uh back to the original point here famous second story is that he set up the sequencer he set up this tape and the phone rang and he went and go answer it and he, he wasn't there when he came back Side one of discrete music was recorded, and he played it back. It's like, that's really good. So, and it is really good. Uh, this is just a, a, a tremendous effort. Seven bucks I paid for it. This is why I leave stickers on, by the way. Seven bucks. Uh, this is on the Antilles uh, label, which is an American import. It was a part of a series uh, that Eno kind of put together. Eno is it's super active. See, but it, it's American. But look, it's it's a UK sleeve. I don't know what to I don't know what to think now. Anyway, hello, hi, how are you? Back from pondering myself here. He, friends with Fripp, right? So he used the same technique with uh, Fripp and came up with no pussy footing. This. The Heavenly Music Corporation and Swastika Girls. Both. This is, uh, Eno made a lot of ambient albums, and uh, they're all fine. But the last one and this one are great and should be sought out. Along with uh, Evening Star. This is really part two. No pussy put footing. Part two. Also on the Antilles label. Uh, 
so index of metals, the, the whole thing is just, both of them are the crowning achievement of Eno's ambient works. He also did music for films, and then it was like a whole series here. So I, I do have Ambient 4, um, which interestingly shows you sort of how to make a, um, a surround sound setup. Uh, so I should probably listen to this with my surround sound on, because basically it's taking the th out of phase material and feeding it to a, 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 re a rear speaker, which is basically what um, Matrix surround sound is. I used to have Taking Tiger Mountain, and I'm sorry, I, I do have Taking Mountain. I used to have uh, Before and After Science. I did saw that album. I don't love that album. That's the fourth of uh, Eno's singing from the 70s. It's fine, but it's retreading other material. Uh, those first three albums are all different. This is uh, more in your face. This is more off kilter and bizarre sounding. And this touches into his ambient work, which was interesting him more. That's the wrong album, Chris. Uh, in, interesting him more at the time. So this has a lot of ambient stuff, and it's a very soothing album. The fourth album, he was working with Talking Heads at the time. Matter of fact, uh, King Leeds Hat is, uh, if you rearrange the letters, is Talking Heads. So he was more interested in that, also uh, produced Devo started doing a lot of production and became a producer. Most famously, he's U2's producer uh, in the 80s. Also do, uh, did art installations. He would make his ambient music or video installations at museums all around the world. Very interesting. I don't have Cluster and Eno. Uh, that's also, I would say, that's probably touching into the ambient uh, world. Uh, I don't have the uh, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts with uh, uh, David Byrne, which was a world music with, uh, world music before it was really exposed to people in America um, and I guess England. Uh, a lot of cut up technique into that. There's so much more I could go on about Eno, but I've gone on long enough. I'll be honest with you, and I've got stuff to do, and you've got stuff to do. I don't want to hold you up, so. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I am glad to finally have this baby back in the collection on, on, on the vinyl. Uh, I had the digital copy, obviously, but now back. Plus, I can now stare at filth, which is always good. Everybody, take care.